Good evening. No one who understands Nicola Sturgeon's burning quest for Scottish independence will be surprised by her reaction to today's firm legal block to a second referendum. It came from the Supreme Court in London, which decided the SNP government in Holyrood could not call a referendum without the agreement of the Westminster government. Scotland's First Minister responded by saying this, As long as there is breath in my body, I refuse to give up on the basic principle of democracy. Ms Sturgeon says she accepts the court's ruling, but she's made a promise and taken a gamble that she'll contest the next general election as a referendum on independence. Lose that and her tenure as First Minister would probably be all over. Thousands rallied across Scotland tonight, no longer just pro-independence, but they say in defence of democracy. That enough is enough and it's our right to decide. We shouldn't be attached to England. It's like staying at your parents' house for the rest of your life. No, we're not wanting that. But stepping back from the crowd, Scotland is a nation divided. A population split down the middle on the question of independence. Today it fell to the UK Supreme Court to break the stalemate, to answer once and for all if Scotland can legally have another independence vote without Westminster's consent. The landmark ruling was concise, but crystal clear. The Scottish Parliament does not have the power to legislate for a referendum on Scottish independence. Undeterred, Scotland's First Minister responded defiantly and swiftly. Nicola Sturgeon says she will run the next UK general election as a de facto referendum, where every vote for the SNP is counted as a vote for independence. We must and we will find another democratic, lawful and constitutional means by which the Scottish people can express their will. In my view, that can only be an election. In a de facto referendum, if you do lose, and let's be clear, you've never managed to secure more than 50% of the vote in a, an election before, there will be a legitimate case to say you had your referendum, you lost, let's move on. If you win, I can't see how it takes you any closer to actually having independence. So have you actually been forced into playing what is a pretty weak hand? If it was perfect, it would be my uh, first preference. The fact that it's not shows that it's not perfect. But I tell you something, it's better than just deciding Scottish democracy isn't worth anything and that people don't have a say. So we will uh, work through uh, the, the hand that has been dealt to us. We will work with that because we have no other choice. The SNP is not giving up, and in Westminster they challenged the Prime Minister on what today's ruling really says about the Union. Will they at least be honest and confirm that the very idea that the United Kingdom is a voluntary union of nations is now dead and buried? Well, Mr Speaker, let me start by saying we respect the clear and definitive ruling of the, on the Supreme Court of the United Kingdom. Uh, and I think that the people of Scotland want us to be working on fixing the major challenges that we collectively face. Scots watched the Supreme Court ruling as it came in this morning. This Pensioners for Independence group gathered hoping at least for clarity. Not happy with that at all. Um, no. no. I think the, the, the support though for independence is going to go up after this. Oh. But it's a lack of clarity from Nicola Sturgeon that has still failed to convince about half the nation. My fear is it's still so unknown. We still don't know if we were an independent country. What would happen with our border? What would happen with our currency? The plan B of a de facto referendum is a major political gamble. And according to Scotland's foremost constitutional expert, Nicola Sturgeon is also staking her own future. If she fails to get 50% of the vote, the likelihood must be that she would stand down as leader of the SNP and she'll no doubt say, I've tried my best but I haven't been able to achieve it. It would certainly mean that the SNP would have to think very hard as to where they go next. Tonight, the First Minister addressed the rally gathered in Scotland's capital. Let's get to it, my friends. Let's win our independence. This may be her last throw of the dice in the cause for independence. Well, Peter, you said that this may be uh, Nicola Sturgeon's last throw of the dice for Scottish independence. Where does it leave Scotland? But where do you think this uh, position tonight leaves her? Well, Scotland remains divided. This ruling from the Supreme Court doesn't change that. It's a fractious society and it's divided over this question of should Scotland be an independent country. 
Nicola Sturgeon has staked her political career, and let's be clear about this, she is doing it in a way that she did not wish to do it. This was not her first choice. She wanted to have an independence referendum in the way that Alex Salmond had a referendum back in 2014. The reason why this move is actually not advantageous for her, in fact, is, is going against her, the odds are against her, is that, first and foremost, the SNP have never won more than 50% in any election before. Secondly, a big part of their vote is the younger voters, and while in the independence referendum of 2014, 16, 17-year-olds could vote, they cannot vote in a UK general election. And finally, we know what a victory would look like if she got more than 50% of the vote, but the UK government would be under no obligation to engage in negotiations. They could completely ignore this vote, whereas if she loses, she would be expected to resign. So it's a huge risk for Nicola Sturgeon, but it's also an uncomfortable position for the UK government to explain why this is still a partnership of political equals and not Scotland being held as a political prisoner.